I'm Pikachu. I know Pikachu sounds nothing like that. What's going on, everybody? Super Rhino 57 here, aka Rhino, and today I am Pikachu, or Nine Tails if you take a look at uh, my tails. Yeah, Pokemon. I don't know. I was going through. I saw these. Anyways, so today we are doing another mod tutorial here on Tutorial Island, and as you can tell behind me, I have these big old things. And what are these? These are capacitors from Bumpera. Ender I.O. That's right, today we are covering the Ender I.O. mod. Now, a little brief thing. The reason I chose the Ender I.O. mod, I've been wanting to do this one for a little while, because I love the Ender I.O. mod. Um, I first saw it, I believe it was in Sky Factory, but it just adds so many awesome features for automation, for just everything you can think of. They are so awesome, and the GUI, GUI, interface, whatever you want to call it, is so simplistic, it's so awesome. So I have this nice little area set up to show you some of the best features. This is probably going to, this might be a two-parter, not 100% certain about it yet, but at least for this portion I wanted to show my favorites, or at least the top most useful stuff that I, I can think of. And again, with the burping on camera, I'm sorry. I don't know why, I just finished an energy drink, and I drink a lot of soda, so I am so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so, there's so much stuff to cover, but I'm not going to show any or much crafting recipes. Uh, I'm just going to show the basic items and the uh, functions of that item and maybe some of the interface and stuff. But as far as recipes go, I don't want to cover recipes just because if you have most of these mods, then you're going to have NEI. And so NEI will give you the recipes you need, like one of the items I'm going to cover is the sag mill. Click it, there's your recipe. Don't know how to make a piston, there's your recipe. Cobblestone, planks of wood, iron redstone. See, so it's really easy to use. You just click it, machine chassis. You got a capacitor, iron, iron bars. See, so it's really easy. So that's why I don't like showing the recipes. So I'm sorry if you are looking for recipes, get any eye you'll get the recipes. Anyways, moving on. One of the top things I enjoy about Ender.io out of everything is the capacitors. In this case, I have the Vibrant Capacitor Bank, which the uh, is the strongest capacitors. There are a couple of them, but capacitor, here we go. So, you got the basic capacitor bank, which can hold up to 5 million RF, but I am using the Vibrant, which can hold 25 million RF. Now, if you t put two side by side, then as you can see, it creates what's called a multi-block structure. They combine. See, there's no lines in between each block. See, like right there, they're two separate, but one in the center, they combine. And so that is pretty awesome. But what it is, is for anything that uses power, you can simply attach to it and it draws power from it automatically. As you can see, it creates an automatic input-output. So when you remove the block, that remains part of the GUI. You can go in here, configure I/O, just click it, and you got the whole object. Now that's how the interface is for pretty much all the machines in this mod. And all you got to do is you can left click and drag it around to get to the side you're wanting to look at. And then in this case, I'm wanting to get rid of that little piece because I just don't like the way that looks without something there. So you right click it, and it changes. It starts with nothing, then input means the capacitor bank is going to draw from it, like down here it does with the generators. Then output, like for a machine, it would output the energy. Again, to disable it, if you don't want to connect to whatever's there, like you're just putting something beside it just to compress your base or whatever, and you don't want it to draw energy from the bank, just disable that spot. And then back to nothing, which will basically be input, output, everything. Anyways, so that is the capacitor bank pretty awesome. Uh, this is not the Ender.io mod, this is Extra Utilities, they're another star generator, super powerful, and when you combine them together, it creates a super huge bank, like in this case, 1.750 billion RF. That's huge. And so I want to go ahead and fill it up, and these are extremely powerful generators. And as you can see, I had to use a bunch of them to get it to fill up really quickly. But a little forewarning, if you do use these generators from Extra Utilities, Nether Star Generators, it does give you potion effects bad. It does damage 
So as you can see, these little particles coming off of me, it does hurt you. So once you activate it, run away. Anyways, moving on. Ender.io also introduces a zombie generator, which requires nutrients. Now, nutrient fluid I will get into over there, but once you get the nutrient fluid, you put it in these generators, they will automatically produce. Now, it doesn't produce much RD, uh, ADRF per tick, so that's not very powerful cons it considering you know if you use a lot more machines, it's going to use a lot more power. And so you'd have to use a bunch of these, which is why I went ahead and just used these. Um, I'm very impatient. I'm sorry. It also introduces a sterling generator, which is just burn fuel is all it does. So you put, you've powered up right here. Actually, no, you don't power it up. <laughs> That's silly. It's a generator. You put something in there that burns. I don't have anything on me. Let me grab some wood or something. Put something in there that burns 20 RF per tick. And see, so it just burns it. Your burn rate two times. Okay, so fairly weak. So, but that's from the very basic. So that's that's what you use at the beginning, whenever you first start off in the world. But some of the most important things, like the sag mill. Now, also, if you notice, there's these little buttons over here on the side. You can configure it to redstone signal. In this case, it's inactive. So. Once you put items in there, it automatically starts working, or you can flip it to where it requires redstone signal. So it's not doing anything. Put a lever on it, and boom, it works. Let's see here. Let's use some clay. Just basic clay. Where's. Is that the. Yep, yeah, there we go. So if I put some clay in there, it's not doing anything. Flip the lever, you see it powers on, and now it's sorting. Also, Ender.io introduces these capacitors, which are usually used for building, but also used for upgrading the machines. So you start off with, you got a basic capacitor, which is just copper, gold, ingots, and redstone. And then from there, you build up. But as you can see, like this one uses coal powder or pulverized coal. So you will need either a sag mill or pulverizers or something like that, depending on what mods you use. Let's see. I don't not 100% sure if Indrio has a pulverizer. Nope, that's from Thermal Expansion, but you can use it as well. Anyways, it also includes configuration, which is what I showed you before with the capacitor. You just tell it, I want to output over here, which you could combine machines that way. Like, if I put a block in here that gives me an item that I'm going to smelt, like coal or something, I don't know then I can configure it to automatically output this stuff down here into the machine beside it. And then that machine will automatically draw it in and burn it. So saving pipes, saving all kinds of stuff. So nice little fe another feature of the GUI. Next we have the alloy smelter. Now Ender.io also introduces what's called alloys, which means several materials, several metals, or anything, blended together into an ingot. Um, one of the more popular ones I know, oh, sorry, going into the wrong thing, I need it over here. Let's see, we need glowstone, uh, redstone, um, electric, I think it is, electrical steel, which I believe electrical steel itself is... an alloy. Yeah. See, so electrical steel is an alloy made from iron, coal, and silicone. Which, as you saw, silicone comes from clay. And I got that in the sag mill. But I believe this is the... No? Is that the recipe? Which ingot am I looking for? Also, I was trying to say earlier, there's this little button over here on some of the machines like this. It gives you recipes. It tells you what you can put in there and what, will give you, what the output will be. So, gold, that's what I was looking for. How did I mix up electrical steel and gold? So, gold. And it's going to automatically start putting that in there. For the capacitors, when you upgrade a machine, in this case, I got the octatic capacitor, which is the highest upgrade for a machine. 
and what it does increases energy storage and speed and range of machines. Uh, range is for like external machines like well I've got over there which I will get there I will get there don't worry that is a farming station FYI but see it creates energetic alloy which energetic alloy is used a lot in this mod in this case it, it's made for enhanced energy conduit obelisks which I've never used the obelisk from this mod but I may cover those in part two experience rod see it's used for all kinds of stuff the capacitor bank see and there's a basic but I've never used the one million I always automatically go up to five million minimal but so that's another awesome function from the Ender IO mod next we have what's called the crafter which I've only ever used them one time and that was for my sky factory for the uh, cobblestone achievement and what it does is you can pump items into it and set up a crafting recipe in here like let's say hmm, let's uh let's just go with gold we'll just set it up to make gold blocks so you open up the, the GUI and it puts a ghost image in the recipe left side is the recipe and you tell it what to make and then the right side is the inventory so I will go ahead and shift click that in there and see it automatically turns them into blocks of gold now you don't have to shift click them in there um, you can have sorry my phone's vibrating my wife's texting me she's out of town right now but anyways it will uh, you can pump items in with blo with uh, pipes or have it automatically draw from the machine next to it whatever like say I'm setting up to build the capacitors let me get back to the recipe then I could put some some of these in there some of the double air capacitors in there and as it makes the alloys it'll pump it into the crafter once it sees it has enough it'll automatically give me the five the five million capacitor bank so that's just another awesome mo or another awesome machine brought in by Indrio we'll get to that near the end that's a very special block along with all the power and everything you got going on here you got energy conduits which this mod introduces very awesome energy conduits not just energy but item, item conduits fluid conduits which I've got laying over here and what it does is it compresses it to less than a block and what I mean by that is you can't put a machine or anything there but it doesn't see that as a full block and the reason for that is you can actually combine item conduit pressurized fluid conduit and energy into a single block so like right here in these sections I've got water pumping to these two machines I've got items being pumped to these two machines and I've got energy going to all the way around and so that is an awesome feature you can compress entire networks through these and in fact I don't have any laid out here but the Ender IO mod also, in order to help, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Add on to other mods, uh, uh, utilize other mods within itself. Like in Sky Factory, you want to automate everything with your ME system. It actually adds in dense ME conduit that works with its own uh, piping. And so you can actually create dense ME conduits along to travel along with your power so that you're not having to run two separate lines of pipes or cables or whatever you want to call them, conduits. And so it'll actually attach on within there. So let me just grab some. So say I had my ME network set up in here. See, it just automatically attaches them. And then you just run off of it just like that. So, like I said, everything gets compressed. It is a super awesome mod, super awesome features. Now, moving on. Over here, I have the power monitor, which the power monitor you want to attach to the energy conduit. But you want to make sure it's attached to a, the strand of energy conduit that is going to other machines. Now, I tore apart my TARDIS a little bit so I can run these underneath because I don't like all the conduits being visible except I did that over there so you could see everything being combined. 
But anyways, this runs over to my farming station. And then the power monitor, you can right click it and it gives you all the information you need as far as I got my capacitor bank, which is attached to the conduit, my machine buffers, how much energy all my machines together can hold, average output of the capacitors and average input for the capacitors. And the only reason uh, it's barely saying 47.5 RF per tick is because it is currently full. So it's not drawing much, it can't draw more than it's already holding. If I were to add to it, then you'd see the full input, which is ridiculous. And then conduit storage. The energy conduit actually has its own internal buffer of 20k RF, or 20,000 RF. So, and that gives you all the information you need in case you're wondering, you're looking around, it's like, I wonder how much RF I am putting out compared to how much I am drawing in. And this will tell you. So it's that's a neat little feature. I've, I never used it, but it's there. So, this right here is called a wireless charger. You attach it to uh, your capacitor bank or generators or whatever, you give it power. And what it does is it, anything in your inventory that has a internal buffer, has a charger in it, it will automatically charge. You don't have to input it to anything, it automatically starts charging. See, look at that. And look how ridiculously fast that is. So like with, uh, again, applied energistics, if you have the uh, wireless terminal you can carry with you, then all you do is get close to it, it's automatically refueled, it's automatically recharged. So that's an, that's an awesome feature. Now, moving on over here to the farming station. What the farming station is, it's an automatic farm. It will lay down crops, it will, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It'll pick them up, it'll harvest everything. And you can configure it to automatically output. In this case, I've got it putting into a chest directly above it. And all it requires for, if you're just doing crops, you just need a hoe in there. In this case, I'm using the Visio to show that it is compatible with uh, magic crops with no other uh, extra mods needed and see so I'll automatically plant some and I've got the octatic capacitor in there again to show how far it can be upgraded that it, like uh, I mentioned earlier it increases the range of the machine and so this would be the case of the range it goes seven blocks wide each side whereas without the capacitor I believe it'll only cover th three blocks and then next one and then yeah, there's three upgrades. So it may only cover this and then this. Yeah. Either way. So that is the highest tier. Of course, I couldn't go all, all the way out this way. But let me see here. Watering can. That's what I need. So I'm going to show you the harvest real quick. It does go in linear patterns. So it's not random. So you can see it's drawing from this line, now it's going to this line, and it'll just move on. And then it'll put in here. Now, next thing is the dimensional transceiver. This is an awesome, awesome machine. And what this thing can do is wirelessly transmit energy and items across space. And I'm not just talking about across the room. I mean, it will also go dimensional, just like the name says. I can transfer to the nether, whatever, as long as I, I believe you need a uh, chunk loader to keep them loaded, but it'll transmit anything. Right now, they do require power, and so each one of these I have set up to a channel, just like this one right here, to receive power. This one is currently transmitting power. I know, I goofed up and m named it wheat, but it is sending power, and so I have all these set up to the same channel to receive the power. Okay. This one I have set to send wheat, which I actually don't need anymore. So the GUI on the right, you got the configure. I've got it set up to draw and push or push and pull from the bottom. So it is with drawing from the chest and pushing in stuff into the chest. And then on the right, you can configure it to in this case I had it set up to whitelist which means only send out whatever is in this little list right here. And I had it set up to only send out wheat. You can also click it and turn it to blacklist. It means send out everything but wheat. Okay. Or I can set a filter for the receive. Sell it to re only receive wheat or something. Okay. Moving on. Here's the energy. 
you see the little icon over here that is the symbol for uh, the energy conduit added on by this mod so a little reminder for you and whenever you're setting up a channel all you do is type in what you what you want to name it on the first one click add and then tell it okay I want it to in this case I used wheat so I want it to receive wheat which like I said was energy in this case unless I move on to items which I set up a item uh, channel for the wheat to <coughs> excuse me <coughs> coughing anyways to send out the wheat anyways so got the energy send and receive items send and receive and then if you want to get into more technical you could do uh, this one as in rail rails that can transfer across space and so you can literally teleport a cart minecart and then I can't see that icon so I'm not sure what that one is I'm sorry so there's all that buffering items that I've got to set up to oops whenever I was changing the whitelist to blacklist it started drawing everything but you can set it to uh, withdraw whole stacks or just only withdraw one item at a time if you want a slow buffer as far as how many items it draws out of the chest okay now moving on over here I'll get to those actually I may not have time to get to those this time so that'll probably be part two but some other blocks added in this is a powered spawner now when you add the ender IO mod into your mod pack any uh, spawner you find out in the world when you break it it will not be destroyed instead it will drop a broken spawner which you can combine in an anvil with the powered spawner and 30 levels and it will give you a machine spawner I've got this one set up to for zombies and it requires the redstone signal which is why the lever okay I'll turn that on in a minute next we have the killer Joe the killer Joe is an awesome machine for automatic farming as far as mob farming so it will automatically kill any mob in front of it and I've got these conveyor belts set up to push the mobs directly in front of it so he can kill them and then all the drops are going to go into this machine from Ender.io wink wink called a vacuum chest it will automatically suck up anything near it where'd it go? dimensional transceiver I've got the, this one uh, drawing from the vacuum chest underneath it so you know that chest doesn't get filled up with all the mob drops and it is sucking up all the drops into the transceiver and putting it back into this chest over here so I have one chest for all my drops see there's the dirt also while I'm over here reservoir another awesome feature added by guess what Indrayo it's a single block but when you put it in a 2x2 two two frame like this it creates a, another multi-block structure but what's so special about the reservoir is you add in two buckets of water just two and it automatically turns it into an infinite water source just like if you were to do it laying down on the ground like you like in sky factory or in a lot of survivals or survival worlds and so that way you don't have the ugly little you know two blocks here two blocks here two blocks here to frame everything in you just get a reservoir put it in there and guess what you have an automatic pumping system and you attach your conduit and it automatically pumps water out and fills itself right back up so that's awesome now I've got the water pumping in over here to what's called the vat now the vat is a machine from Indrio that uh, creates different fluids in this case this formula or this recipe requires hooch which is made with water seeds or poison potatoes potatoes you know uh, farming crops and sugar and it will give you hooch and then you can turn hooch into rocket fuel fire water or in this case I have it making nutrient distillation which was that fluid I was telling you earlier from the uh, zombie generator and I've got it being pumped I got the sugar and in this case enderman heads being pumped in from this chest right here it is being sucked into this dimensional transceiver and this one is set up whitelist it is set up to uh, vat it is sending only those two items over to this particular one which is then getting drawn out by these item conduits 
and pumped over to the vat. Now, that, like I said, the vat required the water, so I've got energy pumping into the vat to allow it to work, water pumping in, and the atoms it needs all through one multi-block structure. Like I said, it is an awesome feature from this mod. So anyways, it's got power, water, enderman head, sugar, creating nutrient distillation. Now the nutrient distillation is going into the killer joe because that is what it requires in order to work. So I'm going to turn on the spawner. Let's see here, see if, okay, it's not drawing anything out yet. I should probably upgrade this. There we go. So it's automatically killing them. Items are automatically getting picked up. So here's a neat little structure for you. If once you're further in game, it's gonna automatically spawn. See, and they're killing them. And it also sucks up the XP. So whenever it sucks up enough XP, you can start taking from it, or tell it if it's got enough built up, you can tell it take, give me ten levels. I got a Zavisia sword from Magic Rat, Magic, Magical Crops. <laughs> Sorry. And then. Maybe zombie on a chicken. So everything is automatic. Oh, and it's giving me all the experience. Oh. And then I can just go right over here to this one single chest. And there's all my mob drops. Ooh, loot bag. Now the final thing, because I am running out of time, I've <laughs> 26 minutes in. The final thing is called, let me get to it, a staff of traveling. Now these blocks I've had going around here, these are vision blocks, or in this case they're called Ender IO, but they're only used for vision. It means I can click on one, right click it with the staff, and it'll give me the vision of that area. But not just vision. See, I, as far away from it as I am, I'm going to right click this one. It allows me to interact. So in this case, I'm going to right click the chest, and I can draw from the chest from way over here. Or there's these other ones which are called travel anchors. I can use the staff of traveling, click on one, and automatically teleport. So that's n another neat little function, and as you saw, as soon as I got in the room, wireless charger fill filled it back up. It does require energy. And see, now I'm way over here. I believe this is... Yep, capacitor. And then there's my farm. So, click the chest. Again, way over here in a whole nother room, and I was able to withdraw from that chest. So, that's the Staff of Traveling, which, if you're playing Sky Factory, is a fairly common drop from the mobs. But I believe that's going to just about do it for today. Um, hopefully, this helps you all out if you are having questions on how to set up certain structures or certain machines. Um, if you did, if it did help you, please leave a like down below. Uh, if you have any suggestions or any ideas for any mob, mod, ugh, mods, I don't know why I'm tripping over my tongue so bad. I am so sorry. If you have any ideas or suggestions for mods you would like me to do tutor a tutorial on, let me know. I will do the necessary research and try and help out as much as I can. I love doing these tutorials. It is so much fun. And I enjoy instructing and helping. So, again, click that like button down below. Leave a comment saying hi. I don't care. Love you all. Hope you all have a wonderful day.